New York Times one time did an article on the town of Bill. It consisted, Bill, Wyoming, it consisted of, at one time, just a little old, very old convenience store. And it was a tiny little school, one-room schoolhouse there and a couple of houses. And that was it. And because of the coal boom that was going on, they, uh, as the trains ran right past Bill, they started working that area as far as loading and unloading and so on, switching train cars. And so because of the employees that were needed in the area, they built a brand new hotel, which is like two or three stories tall, with a restaurant attached to it, which more than doubled the population of the town of Bill, just building that little hotel there. New York Times ran an article on the population explosion of one of the smallest towns in the nation. This is Glenn, who's on the phone. Hey, Glenn, I, I just wanted to let you know that you do have a listener in Bill, Wyoming. Wow, and you're like the entire population. Well, you know, there's a few people around. There's some uh, some folks dropping off their kids for school here. There's a, a rural school that's part yeah. of the Douglas Commerce County School District. And, uh, yeah, some people having breakfast at Penny's Diner. But, right. uh, yeah. So See, now here's the thing. I, I've driven through Bill because I, when I first moved to Wyoming, I lived up in Gillette. And I would swing through Bill on the way down here to Cheyenne. And on the way through, I thought, boy, that was, you blink an eye and it's you're done. That's the whole town really so before the hotel in the little diner opened up really it was what just the convenience store in the school yeah there were the 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 convenience store so to speak or the bill store has been there for 50 plus years right. and it really hasn't changed much um i remember getting polish sausages there as a kid mm -hmm. um, and it, it still pretty much looks the same but um the up railroad uh put a a, a terminal in there and and the hotel was built to support uh those guys for the most part and uh, uh and now we've got a pretty good amount of oil oil field traffic that uh stays there from time to time as wow. well you could actually wind up with the whole town at some point so it sounds like you grew up there um in the douglas area okay. yeah so yeah. my dad was in oil and gas in the 70s and and a lot of that was happening between douglas and bill at that time as well okay. so what do you do in the town of bill i'm in oil and gas okay you pretty much either have to be there or at the hotel. Unless you're a school teacher. Now, the school, when I remember before the hotel opened up, the school was like a one-room schoolhouse with what? How many kids? Like five at tops? Yeah, something like that. They have a, a modular school there now. The old schoolhouse is, is still there in the, as a community center. Yeah. But uh, um, they've put in a, a modular building there. And, and I, I think they usually have eight or ten kids that okay. are... That are from farm and ranch, you know, in the area. So this is the second time that the New York Times has mentioned the Wyoming town of Bill. I'm I wonder if people in New York City are beginning to wonder what the town's like. I just I don't think they'd be able to fathom it. They would leave all those skyscrapers and stand out where you guys are and have no way, no no understanding of how to take that in. Um, absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's it's a whole different a whole different country, but uh, but. Uh, you know, if they leave their politics behind and yeah, want to come welcome. out here and, and get involved in uh, in what's going on, we'd, we'd be glad to have them. So how many people live in Bill now? Well, you know, I, I actually, um, it's probably about the same number of, of permanent residents. There's really, there's really not much there as far as housing at, at all. It's mm. just the Bill store and, and the, the motel, which okay. there's some people, I think, who, who stay there you know, full time, but, uh, but really it's just, it's just a blink and miss it. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. The, road. the only reason I, I knew it was there was because the speed limit changes as, as you round the corner and drive through. And I did come across, there was a talk show host that was up in Gillette, Wyoming, who used to joke around about the town of Bill's airport. And that means the planes can land as soon as the traffic clears on the highway. <laughs> that was basically your runway. Yeah. Well, I'm forgetting the number. What highway is that? Is that 50? 59. 59 comes 59. up through there. Yeah. Okay. Which which is a good a good time to uh make a plug here if there's if there's anyone from Wyoming state government listening in. I think it would be really great to appropriate some funds to make Highway 59 a four lane oh, from, please, from yeah, Douglas yeah. to Gillette. Oh yeah. It, it 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 really has become busy and it can be a dangerous place to to drive on a daily basis. And, well, and it's not uh, just that 59. And it really is the it just really is the heart of the Powder River Basin. Yeah. For coal and oil and gas and 
and uh, you know other natural resources in the area, yeah. uranium. Uh, so it's traveled a lot, and and it really would be nice to have some funds available to, to upgrade that to help the the yeah. infrastructure. See, I look area. at fifty nine, having driven that several times, and I'm thinking it's not just that, and they've tried doing a few things like adding that third passing lane here and there. That helps a little bit. It's not even so it much four laning the whole thing would certainly help but also making sure that it can handle the weight of that traffic because a lot there's a lot of big heavy trucks moving way too fast that's another problem and that just tends to tear it up yeah it it does uh, with the oil field activity certainly there's there's moving a lot of frac sand and, yeah. and a lot of heavy equipment rigs move and things like that so uh big equipment heavy equipment and uh, some road improvements in the future would, I think, really help improve okay. the Powder River Basin. Well, let me ask you one more question, and, and I'll let you go. So uh, the New York Times article was talking about a lot of land being sold off in that area, or at least the rights to frack up in that area, which means, according to the article, a lot of heavy equipment is moving into your area. Are you seeing that from the town of Bill? Yeah, you know, it seems like... Most of the activity is is either south of Bill or north of Bill. Um, Between so you much, and Douglas, you know, yeah, that the last year has really has really picked up in that area, um, and then also as you get further north, um, you know the right area is yeah. is also extremely busy. So certainly through the through this whole Powder River Basin, there's there's a lot of traffic, and you can certainly tell that that oil and gas is doing well. I you know I haven't heard of a lot of private land being sold but but certainly a lot of a lot of land is being leased for for the mineral rights for drilling and and mm-hmm. uh and there's there's a lot of activity going on so. a little boom going on well thank yeah. you for calling in from the town of bill i really appreciate that yep you bet all right keep up the good work all right Thanks, you have a Glenn. good day sure 825 is the time see that's why i love this radio station here the signal goes up to gillette we get calls from gillette we get calls from Casper into South Dakota, Nebraska. We get calls from south of Denver. The town of Bill is north of Douglas on Highway 59. And talk about a phone call from out in the middle of nowhere. That was it. 825, 26 degrees, clear skies in downtown Cheyenne. AM 650 KJB Radio.